Hey guys, it's Crystal Cook with ACDI, and today we're going to do another Female Friday. I'm very excited to have Lisa Miller with me today, and she is America's marketing stream lead for PaperCut Software. So thank you so much for being here today. I'm excited uh, guys, to join you. Yeah, we have a great conversation kind of laid out. And before we do that, though, I do want to describe um, the PaperCut, ACDI, and reseller dynamic. So as we're going through this conversation and talking about some of our hot topics, you guys can really follow along well. So Lisa is with PaperCut, the print management software, and they're based out of Australia, but of course they have offices all over um, the world. And she works at the Portland office, or do you work from home or a little bit of both? A little bit of both. A little bit of both here in the U.S., and they don't sell directly to customers or directly into the dealer channel. They use ASCs to sell and support their software like ACDI. And then of course, ACDI sells into the dealer channel um, and we train and support our partners to sell paper cut. So that's kind of the, the ecosystem here. So you have paper cut, ACDI, dealer resellers, and then the customer. And I wanted to make sure we clarify that right out of the gate so you guys can understand what we're talking about. And then also, you probably have a similar ecosystem depending on what you are selling and what your structure looks like. So I wanted to make sure we were very straightforward so you can you know, compare it to what you guys are doing. Uh, but today, we wanted to talk about meeting the ASCs like ACDI and reseller needs in the channel and what we can do to better empower our dealer resellers to sell paper cut. But a lot of the points that we're gonna be talking today is kind of software uh, generic, where you could probably plug in different softwares and stuff in there as well to, to get the same successful result from it. So Lisa, I'm gonna stop talking a little bit and let you jump in and talk about empowering the partners and what we can do to, to make them successful and to replicate current success. Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, I think measuring and defining what success means is super important. Obviously, when it comes to sales, the bottom line is the bottom line. So we're ultimately trying to drive sales. But what does that success look like and how hard or difficult does it does it take to get to that successful sale? Um, so I think that there are ways that we can define success as are we working smarter, not harder? And I think there's an opportunity to to really leverage how we're educating the sales channel in, in general, um, the solutions providers, how are we seeing that ecosystem come to fruition? And I think also there's an opportunity to really start to understand what the end user's customer, what, what their needs are. And I think that that's where you have to start. I mean, I'm in marketing, so the target audience is always gonna be, it's like location and real estate. You've gotta know who you're talking to. Yeah. And so whether I'm talking to an end user customer, a dealer or an ASC like yourself, I think it's really important for me to be able to shift my focus a bit to be able to say, hey, what are your needs here? And you and I together are helping to support the dealers so that way they can bring those solutions to the end user. So <clears throat> when I think about, you know, how are they successful? They're going to be successful because they're building relationships and they are providing value. Ultimately, that's what the end result is. And I know that um, you guys provide a lot of value to the channel, as do we, because we've been, that's what we do. And so being able to clearly define what that is for the dealers, so that way the dealers then can choose the right software and ASC to, to go to market with, and to be able to then understand what the, the value that they bring to this channel situation to the end user customer. So really it's it's a little bit more about like really defining what success looks like for you and where do, where are, where can you add value in the channel itself. I don't yeah. know, did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it absolutely <laughs> did. So when we look at paper cut and you guys do a great job with your marketing team, you put out a lot of good content, as, um, you put a lot of information on the product. What would you say the biggest gap is between what you're working on and then what the, maybe the dealer sales rep is doing with paper cut. You know, I think, you know, when I think about what the dealer's challenges are, I, I think that there is a challenge in just keeping up to speed. 
because they're not just selling paper cut. They're selling other products alongside that solution, um, whether they're they're coordinated, um, you know, whether it's the the actual, you know, printer, copier machine itself, or we're talking other solutions that, you know, happen to be in their portfolio. So I, when I think about what the, the struggles of a dealer are, is, is that overwhelm of staying current, knowing where to go to get the information that they need, being able to really kind of, I, I call it future proofing, thinking about what you might need for your, yourself in the future. So, you know, I, I like to do things for myself today to be able to ensure that, um, you know, something else in the future is easier. So thinking about making that sales call. And if a dealer is going, knows they're, they're going to a school district and they're going to be talking to a few people, what are some of the things that they can do to prepare and really get that school district to really understand what you're coming to the table with so that way when that conversation happens it's more of a deeper conversation versus the 101 conversation yeah. and i think that there's a real opportunity there to kind of future proof for yourself and um some people call it assignment selling but there's there there are ways to really nurture your prospects so that way by the time you actually have that conversation it's a much deeper conversation and your sales cycle closes a lot faster you know one thing that makes me cringe is when someone says oh crystal she's in sales because i remember being in college and taking like a professional selling class and being like uh i'm never gonna do sales that looks like it's the worst but i don't feel like i ever sell anything I feel like I'm solving problems. And I think that we could all benefit from kind of shaking our head and clearing like the, the sales mentality and hitting a certain number. I mean, that's important. That's probably how you're structured. I do understand that. But um, it's nice to have real human connections and conversations and see if there is a problem to solve. And if there's not a problem to solve, you're not going to sell right? You have to be solving a problem. And so I love that ACDI and paper cut really tends to focus on solving problems rather than convincing someone that they need something. And that's kind of a technique that we try to instill within our, our dealers and our resellers as well. Uh, and I do know that you are currently working on like a toolbox and a program creation for paper cut resellers. We really want to, to create some tools to help strengthen the entire dealer channel. So can you tell us a little bit about what you're working on right now? Yeah, it's still in the, the ideation phase, but really what I'm starting to see is there are some things that we could really help with the, the dealers to be able to go to market better. Um, and to the point of what you were just saying, we're here to solve solution or solve problems and, and create those solutions. So how do we get over that, that hump of, of feeling overwhelmed with all of the things that are available? How do we simplify this? So that way, number one, the customer can say, yes, that looks exactly like what I want. And you can close that, that deal more quickly but also start to identify the people that might not be the right fit for you. And some of that might be training. Um, there might be some opportunities to really start to uh, provide content that is evergreen and reproducible. You can tweak it for your specific business. But if you go to a trade show, we see a lot of this. I, I've seen this for years. People spend so much money thinking about going to the trade show, what you're gonna have at the show, what's gonna be the, the freebie for the adult trick-or-treating at the booths, all of that fun stuff. But afterwards, you've got this, this Excel spreadsheet of leads. And then what happens? Yeah. What is the plan for those? And for me as a marketer, that's where I cringe because that really should be the one of the first thoughts is not only what is the message that you want to communicate to the people at the show, but what what is the role of of the nurture and the follow-up afterwards. And so back to the content that we were talking about earlier is really ensuring that there are ways to educate and, and bring the prospective customer along for, for the ride, but solving those needs that they have. So that way, when the salesperson calls, they pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a real opportunity. So from a marketing perspective, I think that there's a way that we can create together as ACDI and Papercut, create some content 
that is, it's easy to use, it's reproducible, and it's something that the dealers, no matter what size they are, can, can pick up and take with them. So that way, after they have a customer call, maybe it's even a customer call, it's not even a trade show, they have these nurturing components that can really start to groom these customers because maybe the buying decision isn't going to happen today. Maybe it's going to happen six months from now. So really making sure that you're staying in contact, staying top of mind is super important. And one of the other big things that we talk a lot about in um, marketing is, is really that thought leadership piece. You don't want to be sold to. No one wants to be marketed to or sold to. We don't want that to your point. Like we want to make sure that we're solving the needs that we have. Mm -hmm. So how can we do that? Let's bring up how other people have been successful. Bring those kinds of thought leadership pieces up. So that way, when the time is right to make that purchasing decision, you're top of mind and it's that much easier to, to have that meeting and get those deeper questions answered. Yeah. And I think sometimes a lot of customers don't know that there's a better way to do things. So they may not even be aware that they have a pain point or they have a specific product because my old hated saying, it's always been done this way, right? And so they don't know. And then when you mention doing an email nurture list and keeping in touch with those leads, even if they don't seem like they're ready to do any purchasing yet. Um, I know on our pre-call, we had talked about sending them webinar invites or mm -hmm. just success stories or just information. Again, we're not, we're not quoting them. We're not trying to convince them or anything. We're just letting them know, Hey, here's what other people are doing. Here's how they solved their issues. And this might be relatable to you. And if it's not, you know, it's not, but I think sometimes in this industry, technology moves so quickly. And especially on the solutions and the software side that you and I are a part of, they don't know there's a better way to do it until someone sits down and they said, hey, let me show you a better way. And that's something I try to get my partners to really understand. If your sales reps aren't showing their current book of business the best and most efficient way to organize and, you know, go through their daily workflow you're opening the door for somebody else to come in and show them a better way, right? And then it's not a selling situation. It's like, oh man, why didn't my partner show me a better way to do business? But now a competitor has their foot in the door. So I, I think that's a great point. And I love the idea of keeping in touch with those leads because it's not always the right time for everybody. And especially in this hybrid work environment where some people are still at home and some people are coming back. Um, if they are interested in a product, a generic product doesn't have to be paper cut specific, they're probably not ready to buy yet, but that doesn't mean that you should write them off. You should be nurturing that lead and kind of working towards the next step. Um, a gap that I see with our dealer and resellers are you have some very large dealer and resellers where they are pretty much their own fortune 500 level company. They have intricate marketing teams in place and they have a whole channel built out to the sales team and they have all these processes built in. And then you have a mom and pop business that's been around for 20 years and it's maybe their two sons that are the sales reps and they don't have any of those kind of marketing resources so, you know, what can we do as ASCs or as paper cut to, to give them the resources that they need that they're lacking for solutions? Yeah, I think that, that, that is, I think during our pre-call, we both kind of identified that that's, that's a, that there's a gap there and to help try to level set the, the reseller dynamic how can we provide them with some of the content that they might need? Um, so I think that, that there's a real opportunity there for us to, to train, to provide um, how-tos, um, I think, that, and best practices, because I think that there's a lot of information out there and it's really hard to just you know, filter through it all. So if we're able to provide them with some, some real tactical insights, so that way they can work smarter, not harder, I think that that is super important because they are developing those relationships. They're, they're doing that, but it's time consuming. So if we're able to provide them with some of the content, maybe, you know, a webinar in a box or a campaign in a box, like we, we, we already do provide some of that, you know, how might we be able to make it easier for them to implement that? 
and continue to nurture those those prospects so that way when the buying decision is is time you know that that they're ready to to move into that role but i think really i think there's an education piece of it that is missing that um i think that's where where there's a real opportunity to because we already provide a lot of content but how do we provide it in a way that really meets them where they're at um, and I think that that's one of the things that I'd like to to see us work on together um, next year is is how we might be able to really meet some of these dealers where they're at so that way we can empower them because again it's a win-win if they're selling more we're selling more and and the, and the customers getting their solutions um, or you know their problems met that's a win-win in my book so I'm always looking for that win-win yeah I'm going to put you on the spot here because I just thought of a really good follow up for this. But let's say we have a dealer and they want to sell more solutions. So let's say they have a sales manager and they have a team of 10 sales reps. And most of our partners have large portfolios. They probably have a couple of print management products, document management, capture software, faxing. So let's say that sales manager really wants their sales team to be more ingrained with selling solutions. What do you think their, their next step should be? How should they reach out or engage their solution experts to get their team trained up and comfortable? Well, I almost think you, I would start with a retro. I would look at what's been, what's worked in the past, because I think that harnessing past successes is going to create some future successes. Mm -hmm. um, so if we know that there are certain combinations and certain customer profiles that are really, you know, maybe, maybe you need to shift your niche a bit. You need to shift who your audience is, who your customer profile is. And so I think if there's a handful of products that really seem to go together well, and you're able to sell them as a solution, start to like identify those and then think about, all right, how did we do that? How did we sell? What were the questions? Um, one of my favorite marketing books is They Ask You Answer, and I actually did an internal workshop yesterday on it. Um, and it's, it's, it's really simple. If the customers are asking questions, you need to be prepared with an answer. So how can we create that kind of content that is meeting the needs of especially those top seven to 10 questions, the questions that always get asked? How do we answer those questions up front and then turn around and be able to create the situation where now they're they're the trusted resource and having those conversations becomes much deeper. So I think that one, I would do a retro and kind of do an audit as far as what what's been done before, and then really try to identify, all right, what customer profile do you want to be going after? Is it the same? Is there something that's missing? Maybe there's something missing in your portfolio from a, you know, that customers keep asking for. And oh well, we don't do that. Well. Maybe it should be. Yeah. So I think really stopping and taking a look at what your environment looks like today is really going to help you inform that, that, that next practice. Um, you know, and also another traditional marketing tool is a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, threats, and opportunities. You know, stopping and, and doing an audit using that simple tool will really help to inform what strategy do you want to be employing next year. And I think that that Taking and this is a great time of year to to pause and reflect. Nature is doing that for us here in the states, mm -hmm. you know, being winter and everything. So it's also a really natural time for us as business, you know, people to be able to relook at what did this year look like and how might we want to um, set ourselves up for success next year. I love that because if they can replicate, you know, their success or evangelize, tell their stories, share, that's going to get some traction right there. Um, also look at your failures and analyze why it didn't work. There's always Absolutely. a piece missing. Uh, sometimes it just wasn't the right customer for it. And that's great. And that should help you decide which, you know, customers are a better fit for those particular solutions. And I know personally, you know, we've mentioned this a couple of times, no one likes to be sold, but I do like hearing how problems have been solved. And I like a good success story, right? I like hearing how people solved a problem. They're not thriving because of it. It's feel good. And I think that's really good for sales reps to be prepared to go to market with, um, but also start building your own toolbox, you know, for the products in your portfolio. 
So no, we're obviously A to the I in paper cut here on this call, but we are building out those tools and we're building out taught tracks and, and success stories and, and case studies and everything for you guys to put into your, your own personal toolbox. But I always want these types of you know calls or videos to be broad and generic where you can apply it to a lot of different things. So it's not just for print management and paper cut, you know, for your document management, for your, your capture and faxing softwares reach out to them. They're also putting together toolboxes for you. And then look at your own book of business, your success stories, and piece together, you know, from that available material, what would work best for your sales reps and for your prospective customers. And I think that is the best way for smaller dealers that don't have a big marketing team to kind of close that gap and not feel like they're disadvantaged playing against some of the larger players in the industry when it comes to solution selling. Yeah. Yep. Well, Lisa, I think we went through our entire <laughs> checklist over here. It was, it, was very, <laughs> it was a very good conversation. I sure appreciate you for uh, being here today. Um, do you have anything else you want to hit on before we close up? No, I just appreciate the, the time and attention to, to us as Paper Cut and inviting me to join you today. So I really do appreciate that and looking forward to an awesome 2022. Oh, wait, guys, I didn't plug Paper Cut, which I need to. So recently <laughs> we had the um, Kanata Report dinner, um, the, the charity gala, and Paper Cut did win the best print management software for our industry. So congratulations. That's amazing. Thank you. And we're so proud to be your partner. And um, yeah, we'll put up some pictures from the dinner because we had a whole lot of fun. And personally, it was so refreshing for me to be out at an event like that because I haven't been since 2019. And just being around the people in our industry and the, the energy and we were sharing success stories, right? It was very inspiring and made me just really grateful to be a part of this team. So thank you so much. Uh, today on the call, I have Lisa Miller and I want to make sure I get her title right. So she is America's marketing lead. I'm sorry, America's marketing stream lead for paper cut solutions. So thank you so much for being here today, Lisa. Paper, paper cut software. <laughs> sorry. Solutions. All right, Kayla, we're going to start that all over again. <laughs> sorry. It's been a See, minute since I've recorded anything. Yeah, there's, there's my <laughs> blooper. <laughs>